All right, how's it going, guys? So in this problem, we're going to derive the moments that you're seeing on the screen here, moment A and moment B for a double fixed beam, right? Fixed at both ends, subjected to a distributed load uh, across the entire length of the beam. So for this problem, uh, we're going to be using the bending moment equation, the differential equation, uh, which is just minus the moment function negative moment function is equal to EI times Y double prime. So we'll be doing some differential equation uh, uh, strategies to, to derive those MA and MB. So first you start with the system, right? In this case, it's what you see up top. Um, it's fixed at both ends. You got a distributed load coming down. Your length of the beam is just L. And the nodal forces on that system, as you can imagine, is just the distributed load coming down and then at the two reactions you have wl over two right because the entire distributed load is just w times l so each one shares it equally wl over two and there is some moment and uh at both ends and that's just m m a and m b and that's what we're looking for right now if you know how to do the method of just integrating diagrams to obtain shear and bending you could kind of get the idea that the shear diagram is going to be nothing more than just the WL over 2 pushing you up on the left side of the beam. And then at the other side, uh, it's also going to be pushing you up. But because of that distributed load, you're going to have a linear negative slope. And that's what you're seeing at the shear diagram. Okay. Now, to get the bending moment diagram, you would think, um, just like in the other problems we've been watching my videos for FEA, that... You'll do WL over 2, which is your height of the triangle, multiplied by L over 2, which is half of the beam. You'll get WL squared over 4, but then it's half of the triangle, so you'll get WL squared over 8. But that's only true for a beam in pure bending. In other words, the two supports at the end have to be pins or rollers. In this case, uh, we have fixed beams, uh, fixed edges, I mean, on left and right, so... That's not exactly the case. We're going to find those values and we're going to prove them using that differential equation I mentioned. So step one, um, you start with the load system, right? Uh, that's just the equation that, I mean, the, the system that you see up top. Uh, just copied and pasted it here, right? Uh, we're looking for MA and MB, right? Um, so you can imagine that MA is going to be counterclockwise and MB is going to be uh, clockwise, just by thinking intuitively, right? Step two, uh, you make a cut anywhere along the beam. It doesn't matter where. And that distance becomes X, okay? Now it's no longer L, it's just X. But you still have your existing uh, forces, right? You still have your moment at the left. You still have your WL over 2 at the left. And then that W times L that was originally becomes W times X, right? Because it's W times whatever that distance is in this case it's just x and then uh wherever you did take the cut you're gonna have a reaction right so that's just mx so nothing crazy right you could follow it and you could do it from either end right in this case i chose to do it from the left side but you will get the same answer if you do it from the right but now you go to step three right you take a moment about the cut section in other words about that red line that you see to the right of the diagram okay that some of the moments should be equal zero, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So zero is equal to, you start off with the reaction at the left, negative WL over two, it's negative because it's going to make a, a counter, a, a clockwise moment about point X, okay? Uh, so that distance to that cut is just going to be X, right? So it's negative WL over two times X. That's the first one. The second one is a distributed load itself. We know for a rectangular load, the the magnitude x at the center so it's just wx and then the distance is x over 2 and that's a positive because it makes a counterclockwise moment and then ma and mx you just add them in there right they're just moments so ma is positive mx is negative right counterclockwise and clockwise and then you solve for mx and that's your moment function okay so the signs kind of just switch you just move mx to the other side and then simplify okay um so that is our moment function, and that is what we're going to be using to put into our differential equation. So I'm going to move step three to the next slide. 
And that's all it is, the same thing, right? I just kept it up there just so you could kind of follow along. Step four is the actual differential equation, okay? This is the bending moment equation, and it's a function of the elastic modulus, the moment of inertia, and the deflection, right? Uh, second integral of, def uh, of deflection. So, um, uh, second derivative, I'm sorry, of deflection. And that's your bending moment equation, okay? So, you, all you do is plug in mx into that equation. Uh, all the signs turn negative, as you can see in step five. The original, look at step three, all those signs, wx squared over two turn negative, and then wlx over two turn positive, and then ma turn negative, okay? So, all I did was just plug it in. Step six was t was to integrate with respect to x, right, your distance, and that's going to give you the slope function, okay? So now we have ei theta is equal to all that good stuff, and it's just basic integrals, right? x squared was x cubed over 3, do the math, uh, x just turned into x squared over 2, and then you do the math, and then ma gets an x, but then you get a constant, c1. Integrate it one more time, you will get uh, x to the 4 over 4, and then for the second term, you'll get x cubed over 3. The moment term will get an x squared over 2. And then c1x, I mean, c1 will get an x, and then you get another constant, c2. So now, at this point, we have our deflection curve equation, right? Y. And you could just divide ei to the other side. But um, in this case, you'll see it's not going to matter because it's independent of those two properties. Uh, but you have your theta equation and your y equation. Now, you have two constants, so we're not done yet. This is just a general solution. This equation solves or can solve several problems, right? It doesn't solve, solve ours just yet. We need to apply boundary conditions. So going back to our diagram, right, step eight, we know at the beginning of the beam, theta and y are zero, okay? Uh, slope and deflection is zero for a fixed beam, uh, for a fixed edge. So that's just basic statics, right? Um, I brought the slope equations from the previous slide and the deflection equation, uh, just so you could see it all in one slide. Um, in this case, I'm going to focus on the slope equation first because that C1 is the only unknown, okay? I could do C2, uh, deflection equation, with the one with C2, but it might, in this case it doesn't, but uh, depending on your problem, it might give you just two unknowns right c1 and c2 so it's better to stick to the and not stick but like apply the boundary conditions first to the equations with the least unknowns so in this case it's the slope equation right c1 i'm gonna go ahead and apply theta is zero when x is zero okay so that means for every x that you see which is x cubed x squared and x on the slope equation that's gonna be right there let me zoom in a little bit that's gonna be uh, 0, 0, 0, and then C1, okay? And then theta is 0, so that means our C1 is 0, okay? And then similarly for the deflection curve, now that we have C1, we could apply the second boundary condition, and for every x that you see, right, we're going to plug in 0. We're going to be using y at x equals 0 equals 0, so every x goes to 0, or is 0, and then y is 0. So that's what you see at the bottom right of the screen, and yeah, RC2 is zero. So in this case, we determined C1 and C2. Um, so now that we have that, we're able to plug it in to that um, uh, previous step, right? The, the, the bending, the deflection curve. Uh, as you can see there, EIY is equal to minus WX to the 4 over 24 plus WL X cubed over 12 minus MA X squared over 2. And that's just this equation right here at the very bottom that you see, okay? Um, I found my C1 and C2, so now that I have that, now I have my exact solution for this uh, problem. Uh, we, we apply one more boundary condition at the beginning, um, and that is, I'm sorry, not at the beginning, at the end of the beam. That means when X is equal to L, in other words, when you're all the way at the end, at the right side of the fixed edge, uh, that deflection is also zero. So when you do that, you solve, um, you put everything in terms of L, okay? And that's exactly what we're looking for. So once you do that, you just solve for MA, and you'll get that your moment A is WL squared over 12, 
and your moment B. Uh, and that's a typo right there. Should have been a negative W L squared over 12. But no harm, no foul, no worries. Um, intu uh, intuitively, you'll be able to see, right, that one's counterclockwise, one's clockwise. But um, these just tell you the magnitudes, right? But um, you get the idea. That's how W L squared over 12 is defined. So that is for a fixed edge, fixed edge, distributed load along the entire span of the beam. Okay. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, just let me know, comment down below and uh, I'm, I'll answer them. Um, I'll probably do a couple other of these derivations for other beams with different boundary conditions and uh, maybe point loads, not distributed loads, just to kind of uh, help you guys understand where these uh, W L squared over 12 numbers come from. Because in this chapter for finite element analysis, you're going to be using a lot of it. So hope that helps.